decayed vegetation that is um that they use to smoke it so it it did it's it too much i like the other one better The Fred Minnick Show is brought to you by Michter's and 291 Colorado Whiskey. And joining the Fred Minnick Show is rising star Bailey Bryan. Bailey, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Good Well, I'm so excited to have you on. You uh, you are, you know, I talked to a few people about you and there was like, oh yeah, she's going to be the next big thing. So... I'm um, I'm stoked to drink some whiskey with you today. I'm stoked too. I don't have a lot of experience with whiskey, so I thought that this would be a good chance to well, figure out. Well, like <laughs> I'm totally I'm totally here to help you. Now you've got a new album coming out called Fresh Start. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, the Fresh Start project is coming out on May seventh, and. It's like the culmination of like a crazy year of my life. It's all about life, love, and the pursuit of confidence. Oh, that's awesome. And you know, you know, whiskey, whiskey can go a long way for confidence. Sometimes it gives people a fake confidence. Oh, but, <laughs> that's been know. my experience with tequila. I'm interested to see what whiskey does. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. So well, let's get, let's get straight to it. Uh, let's start with the, the Kuiper belt. So okay. this is this is a a new brand on the market. It's called Kuiper Belt, and it's a it's an eight year old Kentucky bourbon. I'm nervous. I'm gonna walk you through it. Don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. Now the 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 rule of the game here is first of all, we're we're it's it's about tasting, you know, and not just shooting it back like it's a, uh, you know, like it's a, you know, we're at a frat party or something. So the Good. first the first thing that I, I I think it's important to do so bourbon is uniquely American so it can only be made in the United States and it can't um, it has to be made from predominantly corn and so okay. fifty at least fifty one percent corn so they can add other types of grains so bourbon is a grain based predominantly corn uh, spirit and then it. It is distilled at no higher than 160 proof. And so every degree that you go up in distillation proof, the more you're stripping out of it flavor wise from the base. And okay. so and so like um, you know, the 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 basicness of, of it the is that corn can really yield some beautiful sweet notes, right? Yeah. And so it has like a base of like a, something that generates something that's sweet. Uh, and then it has to go into a new charred oak barrel at no higher than 125 proof. And the barrel is kind of where I like I like to tell the story of bourbon most of all. And this is a 90 proof one. So this is eight years old. And if you think about the the barrel, the barrel is like how the you know the whiskey matures. So every single day it's in that wood barrel. It's moving in and out of the wood. And so the color is an indication of its time in the barrel. And this is a beautiful color, you know, and the color can be a lot like an album cover. You know, you, you're an artist, and so you put a lot of thought and effort into an album cover, and you want that album cover to get people excited about listening to your music. It's the same about bourbon, and they cannot add anything to it. So this is all natural. So this is like pure, all natural stuff here. There's no caramel dye number Nothing. 17. Yeah, just, just the wood. And so, okay. and then you swirl it around a little bit. When you smell it, smell it with your mouth open. Oh. By smelling it with your mouth open, you're relaxing your olfactory, and you can kind of like have it kind of kind of go back and you know to the back of your palate a little bit. You can taste it on the way out. Got it. All right, and then we taste, and when you taste, oh. you want to feel it all over your palate. You know, feel it on the tip of your palate, and have it move kind of back a little bit. Okay. And then uh, you just you don't want to, you know, it's not a shot. You just want to put a little bit on there, and you should f- taste the sweetness on the tip, 
and the savoriness on the middle and the bitterness and the spiciness and the middle toward the back. Am I am I swishing it around at all? You want to move it. You want to move it around your palate. It's like you know, in wine, they'll go, you know, they'll kind of gurgle it a little bit. Whiskey's this is a ninety proof, you know, so you know that could be too hot for you. So I would say <laughs> just kind of gradually move it around with your tongue on on your palate. You know, Easy. You, so here we go. Okay. Oh, I like that. That is good. It's good. That is really good. You know, today Ooh. today is uh, Oaks Day here in uh, in Kentucky. You know, we're the part of the Kentucky Derby. Oh, are you and, in Kentucky? Yeah, I'm in Kentucky, and and this is a right around the time where I'd be at the track. You know, breaking out my flask. You know, lighting a cigar <laughs> with my buddies and my wife. You know be it's um it's a wonderful time but of course everything's so different now yeah how have you how has covid been for you have you how have you handled it uh you know fred there's been ups and downs yeah. i've handled it uh well in some cases and not well in some cases uh it's been you know it's it's been terrible in a lot of ways but it's forced me to get really creative with the way that I make and promote mm -hmm. my music. It's made me really thankful for the team that I have around me because when the world started shutting down, we were getting ready to start releasing singles and like leading up to this project. And it would have been really easy to be like, all right, we don't know when we're going to get to tour this music. We don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. We're, let's just shut down for a bit. But my team was like, no, let's figure it out. Mm -hmm. Like, we believe in this music. We we believe in, like, what we've been working on. Like, I bought a green screen and made a ton of content with that in uh, my boyfriend at the time's, like, office room. I was like, hey, I'm just going to live in this room. Is that cool? Because I <laughs> now, basically. <laughs> um, and... Uh, yeah, we figured it out. So, like, I mean, music-wise, it was interesting, but I think I, I have so much more confidence in myself, like, as an artist and my ability to, like, promote my own stuff on my own. Um, yeah, per personally, mental health-wise, it's it's been a whole other thing, but... Yeah, I it's, it's, it's been hard, you know, when, you know, when your profession is basically being on a stage and entertaining people, um, I share very similar, you know, feelings for that. And, you know, fortunately for me, I drink bourbon for a living and it, it, it came in handy in the past year. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you, when did you know you, you were going to be a musician? When did you know? Well, uh, my parents said that they knew when I was like four years old and I was in the bathtub and I wrote my very first song. It was called Pickles in the Forest. Oh. Uh, pickles in the forest, pickles in the forest. Oh, how funny I can be. And that was the whole song. Um, and they, I, I know all the words cause they sing it to me all the time. And they're like, hey Bailey, remember your first single? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I, I really can't, remember a time when I didn't want to do music it's kind of been the only thing I've ever been like super good at mm -hmm. that I also enjoy um and I just I've I always have like written songs and like like made up dances and made my parents and their friends watch them like I've always liked attention so that bodes well for me as an artist um yeah, I, I can't remember a time when this isn't what I wanted to do and like kind of just what I knew I was going to do. I I started really writing songs, like songs with a structure that didn't, mm -hmm. that like maybe made sense to listen to probably around the time that I was like 12 and I got my first guitar. And after that, it was like, all right. So you started playing, you started playing guitar at, um, at 12? Yeah. Wow. 
And you, you, uh, you, you're a little bit of pop, a little bit of R and B, a little bit of country, a little hip hop. Um, you've got, um, you, you got, uh, you got all the genres covered here. I think the only thing you're missing might be heavy metal. Do you, uh, where, where, where is your? Do you have a little heavy metal in you? You gotta bring some. Uh... I don't have. I wouldn't say I have any heavy metal in me, but I did grow up near Seattle, so I have a little mm -hmm. bit of grunge. Does that work? Well, let, yeah, grunge is the. Um, I don't. It's not. It, that wouldn't be heavy metal like today. That's just. That's just like rock. I mean, it'll get like yeah. a side label of grunge, but. Um, yeah. You know. Like, uh, I think heavy metal now is like defined as like, you know, throat and rah, you know. <laughs> yeah, none of that. Well, closest I get a grunge, which is a totally different thing. But otherwise, yeah, I pretty much have all the all the genres covered. I people ask me a lot, like, how did you start in country? You grew up in Washington State, to which I reply, I mean, I grew up in Washington State, like Seattle area, but in a pretty small town. So mm -hmm. like. Well, I was a few hours away from like this, like rock scene in Seattle. And there's also an amazing underground hip hop scene there. Like I was still getting stuck behind tractors on the way to school. And also I picked up my first guitar when I was 12, which was around the time when Taylor Swift's first album was like huge. And I think we like as artists, we kind of like develop our sound and our style just based on like, copying the stuff that we like mm -hmm. until like the bits and pieces of it that feel like who we are and like at the time from like the age of 12 to 15 like i just wanted to be taylor swift i was like this is what i like the most i i'm obsessed with boys and i feel i have zero control over my emotions and this speaks to me well i, I haven't changed very much however <laughs> um, <laughs> i found i found genres that speak to me too but I got lucky enough to sign a publishing deal when I was 15 when I wanted to be Taylor Swift and and I started getting ready to release music when I was like 17 wow. and so when you listen if you listen to my my catalog a few projects um you're just hearing me like figure out what I actually like mm. and it you hear the very start which is like country and just like mimicking taylor swift pretty much and then growing into like these other influences that i had the whole time and just figuring out what sounds like me and the beautiful thing about music right now is you don't have to choose a genre you know it's like 20 years ago you know the managers and agents would say okay you have to be in this box but now you can live in a world where you can be a little bit of everything and and we dig the audience digs that, you know, For sure. I will say like when I was fully trying to be a country artist, when I, when I like was starting in country, I had a country record deal. Like I did feel some pressure to fit into a box and be one thing. I would say country is one of the genres where like, you got to meet some criteria if mm -hmm. you're going to, and I kind of quickly realized like, Ooh, I don't know a single George Strait song. Um, I don't, <laughs> picture of uh dolly Parton house maybe i'm not cut out like i like guitars i love lyrics that tell a story but like pop music it's just whatever's popular it's just make something that people like and you're making pop music but country music like there's some there's some requirements and i have a lot of respect for the genre which is kind of part of why i moved away from that label i was like ah you guys are because there was I would get comments from people like, why are you in country? Like you're, you're like wearing a, like chance the rapper hat on country radio tour. Like, yeah. I don't really, I'd be like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I just <laughs> up here. It's fully like such a big part of like my foundation as a songwriter. But I was like, I like other Sonics. I love hip hop. I love R and B. Like I'm going to just incorporate all of this and call it pop music. Did you ever get a cowboy hat? No, I refuse. And also, like, it's so funny because, like, as soon as I really got into the the industry and country, like, my kind of, like, rebellious streak came out a little bit when I found people, like, when I found that there were, like, some rules, I was like, nah, 
I'm going to be here, but I'm going to, I'm going to like do a Drake cover during my set when I'm opening for Dan and Shay, like stuff like wow. that. I was like, you didn't have to do that. <laughs> and there's also, there's, there's a little, it's not always the case, but I, I help like produce a, uh, a country music festival and, and, you know, there were like some religious undertones there too. You know, people mm -hmm. have a, um, you know, and there's nothing wrong with this. Like I, I have nothing against anybody, you know, with, you know, faith, uh, but, but it's, but it's like, sometimes it, it's like propelled into a genre that is not gospel, if that makes yeah. any sense, you know? No, for sure. And I, I grew up singing in church actually. And that's like a part of my coming in to music. And I, I kind of felt originally like, okay, I'm like, I'm a, you know, I'm a young Christian girl. Country feels like the safer path to go. Cause it is kind of intertwined there, but it's, it's not gospel. It's, it's kind of an interesting thing. Cause it can become like a, like a trope almost mm -hmm. rather than a real faith thing. And I kind of, for me, it was cool to realize like, no, like this can be like a part of me and my foundation and I don't have to fit into this mold of what people think it looks like in like country or gospel or whatever. Well, uh, as we go to uh, whiskey number two, it's we're going to the Westland from your home state. Uh, when I learned you are from Washington, I was so excited to uh, to send you um, to send you some of uh, a barrel pick of mine from two thousand yes. from two thousand and fifteen from a place called Westland. Wait, okay, I I, meant that I poured too much in this one, and I'm not done with it. Oh well, you don't have to drink it all. You can. Uh, do you have another glass? I can... Yeah, I, do. I was like, I don't want to waste it. I'm, I'm gonna save this. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. We we can keep sipping on that. You can come back to that one as well. It's what I'm gonna do. I <laughs> I poured it. I panicked and I poured it into a tiny bowl. So that's what I'm gonna sip it out of after. Well, I mean, that's a that could be the new that could be the new like sipping ritual for the show. Uh, like, oh no. You you get one glass and the rest you have to sip out of a bowl like soup. Bowl or something something other than a glass. That's I mean Bailey, you could have just straight changed the game for my for my program here. If you don't finish it, you have to pour it into another container. <laughs> a, mug, a bowl. Try it from a plate if you want. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, the Westland. I saw it when I opened the box yesterday and i got super excited i was like this is from my homeland yeah yeah i wanted to send you and there's a few distilleries in uh in washington uh woodenville happens to be one i'm a big fan of uh they were they won my best uh non-kentucky bourbon a few years ago Ooh. uh four bar which is in seattle very tiny but also very mighty and then westland who is kind of like you know they're nationally internationally renowned they're actually the i believe between them it's either them or balconas but they're the largest american single malt producer so Ooh. we are going away from bourbon for a moment okay we are actually about to taste an american single malt now single malt is traditionally this is a category that the scots own so uh scotch whiskey has various types of whiskey but they're they're in the quality perspective, they're best known for single malts. And single malts means basically uh, in Scotland, it means something very different than it means here if it's produced here. There is actually no federal def definition at the moment for American single malt, but like from, from Westland, you know, you you have a kind of like a, they're, they're the best or one of the best. And so like, I picked this barrel in 2015 so what? yeah so this has been this has been sitting in a bottle for uh for six years i wanted to bust out something special for you from your from your home state wait that's so cool you picked this when i the year that i signed god no there's no way that the year that i signed my record deal so that would be you're 23 now right so you i was 17 or 18 You'd so, have been, so you'd have been 16, right? In 2015? Oh, yeah, you're right. No, no, no. You're right. This was this was the year before I moved to Nashville. 
And wow. I'll tell and I'll tell you, I am not a math person. So the fact Me that I was either. The fact that I was able to pull that out on the fly, uh, this is a good day for me. <laughs> if it was correct or not, I have my way of fact checking that. <laughs> like, like artists, it's like you tend to like we tend to be like in a different world uh, when it comes to mathematics, and the that is not necessarily a positive thing unless you're like on the Beethoven circuit, which is very mathematical. Having math skills would come in handy. With music but it's but you don't need it. i'm uh oh <laughs> just use a chipotle napkin to try it oh my gosh <laughs> oh, oh, i got it i got uh, it do you I like Ch you like chipotle it's fine yeah do you remember yeah. it, you remember a few years ago when it, it was like making everybody sick yeah i don't really want to talk about it because <laughs> i <laughs> I didn't remember that, but thank you. <laughs> well, I I won't talk about it then. But it was, oh, it, was, it, was it was like a big national news story for a while. It was. Was it like an E. coli thing? Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. You just you just re ruined Chipotle for me. Well, here's the good news. Whiskey, you you put whiskey on your belly. Bye bye E. coli. You know? Yeah. So you today we're 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 taking medicinal uh efforts here. But uh but, but I haven't been I haven't been to Chipotle in ages. You're not missing anything. Oh I'm doing open open mouth sniff. So is Ooh. there a, this is a yeah, so this is gonna be made from uh barley. Uh so like a barley, malted barley and Bailey, barley. This this feels like this feels like it's gonna be my favorite. It's coming from uh from your territory. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm deciding that it's my favorite before I, <laughs> I you know what? I, I I'm not gonna side against you. I think you could be you know, your palate is is probably pretty sharp, and I'm telling you, this is a good whiskey. So here we go. Yeah. And that smokiness that you're tasting there, that's like a peat. Who's a peat? Peat, like so. Peat is like a, like a. Oh, I got this. Decayed vegetation that is um, that they use to smoke it. So it, it did. It's it too much. I like the other one better. Dang it! Mark. <laughs> Dang it! I also forgot. This is gonna sound bad. I forgot for a second that I wasn't taking a shot when I drink. So I like started tipping it too fast and then I was like, oh no, 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 no. So I did, I did take a bigger drink of that than the other one. Ah, uh, so it went, probably went straight back to your throat and like. It did a little bit. Yeah. I'm gonna, I have a sip left, I'm gonna try that. Yeah, you you give yourself a, a little bit of a break here. I'll, I'll chat with you for a second so you can relax. Do you have any water? So, yeah, I sip. Have well, coffee will do. Yeah, coffee, coffee, water. You're definitely, you're definitely like definitely cut from the same cloth as me. Like I can't be too far away from my coffee. Now, no. speaking of which, like you are from Washington, so that means like coffee's in your DNA. What's what's your favorite uh, coffee house there? And I was sipping frappuccinos at eight years old, probably. Um, my favorite coffee place there, you know. I can't, I can't really name like a coffee shop in Seattle necessarily. That's like my go-to, but growing up in Squim, Squim, Washington mm -hmm. is the small town I grew up in. There was like hella, just like little drive-through coffee shops, like every block, like you drive through the like half mile stretch of downtown that we have and you'll literally go by seven drive up coffee shops and they all had the most bomb coffee my favorite place there was a place called the cracked bean by my parents business okay. that i would every day on the way to school the cracked bean and then where else i had another go-to oh hurricane coffee was one and the cool thing about getting coffee in squim is that squim is the lavender capital of the world Mm. Quite, so there's lavender everywhere 
And so you can get lavender flavored anything at any restaurant or coffee shop or bakery. So I would be, I would be drinking like lavender coffee every day. Highly recommend. I love the smell of lavender. Oh, now, nice. now I spent, I spent a good deal. I've spent a good deal amount of time in Washington. And I remember going up into a, uh, to a, a drive through the cobwebs had yet not ha, had not yet cleared and um I, I i go up and i'm ready to order a coffee and the person serving it was just like it was like half naked and i was like <laughs> oh no was it one of those yeah <laughs> i was like what the hell is this shit <laughs> we have the the boob coffee places that's not that's not we don't have those in squim but there's if you're if you're like in monroe on your way to my parents live in uh, leavenworth now which is like somewhere in like the cascade mountains um and if you're making the drive from like squim to leavenworth there's a few there's a few of the spicy drive through coffee places i i think spicy is a really nice way to put it uh <laughs> But I mean, <laughs> that was like I would I was there. This is when I was in the forestry industry in like 2001, 2002. I was going around writing scientific articles on the uh, on the forestry space. And the guy and the guy with me, I think probably knew, just wanted to see my see me see my reaction. But yeah, that that kind of took me aback. Uh, and the and then I was in uh, wine country out there a while back. And they're still huh. and they're everywhere. They're everywhere out there, and it's like, <laughs> yeah. I know. I do. I know of a few. It's a real. It's a real thing. But there are lovely, respectable drive-throughs <laughs> <laughs> that the people wear the entire shirt. I, I, I just, it just shocked me because Washington is the last place I would have thought uh, that would. Yeah, have anything like that, but uh, feels like a Vegas thing. It, it totally feels like a Vegas thing. So, do you like Nashville? Nashville is quite a bit different than than Washington. I do. I do like Nashville. It was an adjustment mm. move to the south from the Pacific Northwest. Um, I miss the nature where I grew up, like just being outdoors hiking, walking to the beach, walking on the beach, stuff like that, or spending time in the mountains, like stuff like that is really inspiring to me. And I feel like my, my mental health, my mind is like the most clear when I like have access to nature-y nature and coming to Nashville, I mean, people are like, let's go hiking. And I quickly realized that means like, let's walk up a hill with some trees <laughs> and that is the view. what's the view it's more trees and that's the whole thing and I was like oh that's different but um uh, be other than that um I really like living in Nashville there's I mean obviously it's the place to be if you're doing country music but since I've explored other genres um I found it to be like a really great place to do any kind of music and to yeah. be a creative person. There's people here who want to step outside of the box and just like make cool stuff um, visually or musically. Um, and I've really enjoyed like connecting with other people who like want to make pop music and who want to like just do dope stuff so it's nashville's just a cool place to be a creative person in general and there's good food so i really like it but it took me a minute to stop comparing it to washington and mm. just appreciate it for what it is because it's a super cool city but it's not seen. well our our next whiskey uh kind of falls in line with that bit of nature uh this is wyoming whiskey national parks and oh. it, it's like it's like a it's a five-year-old bourbon made in uh, made in Wyoming, and okay. they're they're raising money for the national park system. Oh, that's wonderful! Speaking of nature, yeah. Well, we, I have one more sip left of my Washington one. 
Okay, okay let's see. Let's see if things change. Okay, we're Bailey Bry- Ladies and gentlemen, Bailey Bryan's going in for her second sip of Westland Distillery, a barrel pick of mine in 2015. She goes in. The taste is in. She's not happy. It's, really the, it's the smoke, isn't it? It's that smoky peatiness, the kind of like... Uh, the peat. Yeah. Can't handle the peat. I want to I wanna love it so badly. <laughs> You see the disappointment in my face. I can see it, yeah. You didn't like it again. Okay. Wyoming, though. I feel good about this because I like the forest. I love a good national park. You know, really, the national park system is is like so important to our country's heritage, you know? Yeah. And just being able to go out and you know, see the animals roll around in the grass and see a buffalo just randomly. Um, it's great. I, I I love me some national parks and state parks too. There's a lot I like in, and you got a national park not too far from you with the Smokies. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, here. And the, I keep forgetting I'm not in Washington right now because I'm like getting nostalgic about it. I grew up basically in Olympic national park and they have like elks and stuff which is really fun to see grow oh wow is it time do i take a sip well i've already i've already started uh, uh maybe it's just my an old habit but i i would smelled it tasted it this is my first time tasting this one. Oh, oh you're way ahead of me i was like bracing myself i know getting... i'm i'm a horrible host i'm like i gotta find out what this one tastes like uh, you know, the critic in my in me was like wanting to taste it. So, I'm in uncharted territory out here by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I like it better than the Washington one, and yeah. that's. <laughs> this is how you know I'm not like a a refined whiskey or any kind of alcohol taster is the way that I critique it is I'm like, well, I like this one and I like this one a little less and I like this one more. And that's the extent. But that's <laughs> that's the that's the beauty of it all, right? You know, is that like I can't tell you what you should taste. I can only I can only like tell you like how to enjoy it and like find out like for yourself what the flavors are and yeah. and i'll tell you you know you're doing just fine and a lot of people have that same reaction as you do on the on the on pete um there's actually a there's a gene in people that they interpret the the flavor of peat, which is basically decayed vegetation that's been uh used for smoking purposes kind of like a coal and there's a gene in people that make them feel like it's uh it's like a dirty old band aid, so it's a good way to put it. But yeah. the but the what you've tasted here, the Kuiper Belt and the National Parks Wyoming Whiskey, those are both straight bourbon. One a Kentucky straight bourbon, one a Wyoming straight bourbon, and yeah. um, I really really like this uh, this Wyoming one. The Wyoming was a vibe. I have to sit the first one in my bowl. All right. I'm going to, this has got to be a thing from now on. This is my favorite. The first, the first to drink from a bowl on the episode, on the episode show. Okay. I love it. The Kuiper belt for the win. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, all right. So the Kuiper belt is the winner right now. Yep. Let's, let's look at this, uh, from a song pairing perspective. Hey. What, um, what Bailey Bryan song would you compare the Kuiper belt to? The Kuiper belt. Okay. Well, it is a little bit sweet. 
due to the corn. Um, but it also has other qualities, which is kind of like me. Mm -hmm. Um, and so what I, what I say when people ask me to describe the kind of music I make, I, cause I hate, I really hate genres. I hate boxes. Again, that's kind of mm -hmm. why I left as much as I respect it. Um, uh, so I've, the genre that I created for myself is sensitive bad bitch music. That's what I call it. And when people ask me like, how do you sum this up? Like, what's a good example of that? I always tell them to listen to my song Roster. Uh, Cause it's a, it's a little bit sensitive. There's some feelings involved. There's, there's the sweetness. Um, but it's also still like kind of a bad bitch anthem. And it's kind of about like, don't mess with me. Cause like I got options, you know? And I very much vibe <laughs> from the Kuiper belt. So this definitely, if this uh, bourbon were a song, it would be Roster by Bailey Bryan. No, no question. All right. So it's on everybody to get a bottle of the Kuiper belt and, um, and, and listen to, to the Roster by Bailey and, you know, do the pairing. I'm going to do it. I'm totally going to do it. You now I can't it. listen to the song without drinking this. Yeah, I don't now, think. And, and you have a little bit of whiskey left there. So, you know. I have you got plenty left I have, there. I have a little bit of the bowl left. I have the rest of this guy. This yeah. will get me You've got a couple, a couple yeah. of lists. That's right. <laughs> and, and I sent you the book, too. So you've got, you've got some... Um, you definitely have some uh, uh, some reading you can learn on. You got the 291. That's a Colorado one, finishing okay. Aspen Staves. Uh, that one will have some smoke in it. It's going to be hot, though. Okay. I'm going to drink it. I'm going to drink it all. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I love it. Well, I tell you what. You've got this, you've got this uh, new new album coming out. Uh, or project, as you like to say, fresh start, <laughs> and um, you gotta you gotta clue in the audience of where the uh, the branding of fresh start comes from because that's got a that's got a whole kind of uh, feel to it. Like there, this might be new. You might be we might be seeing a new Bailey Bryan with this. I mean, for, for sure you are. Um... I kind of thought that the concept came together for me when I wrote the title track of the song like over a year ago, maybe two years ago, probably a year and a half ago. Um, I wrote the title track, Fresh Start, and it was about letting go of a relationship that kind of inspired most of the project. Um, but it was also like a brand new sound for me. It was really me leaning into like my pop and hip hop and R and B influences over country, even though lyrically that's still, I think, a part of me. Um, and that's what it was. And I was like, oh, this has to be the title track of the album, whatever the album's gonna be, because like this is a this is a new chapter for me. It's a new era. Like I've learned a lot. I had to 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 like make this transition genre wise. I like. <clears throat> I had some like breakthroughs with my mental health that I feel like gave me the confidence to put out this kind of more confident sound. Um, <clears throat> and I was just like ready to tell this story, you know, and then 2020 happened. Yeah. And, you know, it started as like, I'm a single girl in my twenties. Like I'm just ready to talk about my growth. And then it was like, the story continued to unfold as I was like making the album and starting to put out singles. And now all the songs on the project mean something different to me. The message like before, the message that I thought it was going to be was like, here's the story of my fresh start. I went through a breakup and my music sounds a little different now. Here it is. And then I was like getting ready to release it and like, so this is so corny I like I fell in love again and then I went through another breakup and a, a whole pandemic was going on in the middle of it and I was trying to I was trying to create a whole different approach to how I was putting out music and I think you know other people were experiencing so many other things outside of their comfort zone at the same time um what I learned was that like 
this whole fresh start concept isn't something that you just like go through once in your life. Like, okay, I experienced my growth. Like I have this big culmination of stuff and like, now I'm new, everything's come together. Life is a series of fresh starts. It can happen every single day if you want. And it's less about the things that are happening to you. And it's more about yeah. what you do with it. You can yeah. create a start out of anything. So that's kind of what the whole project means to me now. And that's the message that I want to send. And it sounds to me like it's a lot about uh, like reinventing yourself. You know, you're, yeah. you know, um, and I, I can, I can appreciate that. But I do have to tell you too, like your, your, your passion to talk about mental health, um, as you have here and other places, um, it was something that kind of drew me to you because I, I am, um, I'm an Iraq vet and I put myself and, you know, through intense PTSD therapy to get where I am today. And my wife is, uh, is a mental health professional. So I say, I say cheers to anybody who can, you know, work on themselves and get themselves in a position um you know to make themselves happy so a toast to you bailey hey, toast. Toast to you. thank you i was surprised you didn't pick up the bowl though because you have the oh gosh what is my problem the, the bowl the bowl is like your favorite right it's off brand for me <laughs> cheers cheers <laughs> well bailey thank you so much for coming on it's just it's been a real pleasure getting to know you i'm excited to see um to see your future because i think nothing but bright stars ahead of head for you my friend thank you so much man i appreciate it this was fun absolutely and as we as we kind of close out i do have to tell you one thing of all the spirits in the world you could go taste just remember vodka sucks vodka sucks i'm not a vodka girl so i okay. <laughs> cheers <laughs>